is that your prayer this morning? Is that what you'd say to God? Take my life. Let it be consecrated to thee. Take my life. Use me for your glory. We're going to look at the Apostle Paul come to that place in his life where God took him and used him in a mighty way, and he still uses him in our lives today through the words that he penned that we study week after week. Thank you for being here today. If you're our guest, we are glad that you're here. We welcome you to our service. Even if you've joined us through Facebook Live, we're thankful that you are here with us today. And we'd ask, Lord, that, ask you that you would uh, let us know that you're here. You'll find that there are cards on the pew rack right in front of you, or you may scan the, on the screen that uh, code and fill it out from your, uh, your phone, or you can take the card in the pen that's there and fill it out. And later in the service, when we receive our morning offering, if you would drop that card in the offering plate, we will know that you were here. I'll send you a letter thanking you for being with us, and we'll pray for you in staff meeting. We're glad that you've joined us for our time of worship this very morning. As we come to this place of, and time of worship today, I remind you of a couple of things. This afternoon is our backpack giveaway out in the field behind us, and uh, we're looking for a great time as we've advertised that, and we're going to give away uh, backpacks to children returning to school. If you're going to serve or, or you volunteered to serve already or plan to, you need to be here by 4 o'clock. And you need to park on the small parking lot, if you would. That would help facilitate other things we'll have going on. So be here at four if you're going to be one of the participants in volunteering and uh, park out here on the small parking lot. Next Sunday, after the morning worship, we will have a walk around the school, a prayer walk, as we go to Dalreda Elementary School, right after the morning worship service, we'll be joined by the, the uh, principal there, Dr. Cutter, and the counselor there. We want to be a part of that also. And we'll provide the bus if you don't want to walk that far. But we'll go up to the school right after the service, soon as we dismiss, and we'll just simply meet there and then walk around the entire school praying for the faculty, praying for the staff, praying, praying for the students, that God would keep them safe and that God would bless their lives in this coming school year. I want you to be a part of that. So you mark it down and make sure you have scheduled the time to stay a little late next Sunday so that you can be a part of that. And I know you'll want to. Uh, Reminds you of Deacon's nominations coming up beginning the 7th of August. You should have gotten your letter in the mail and a nominating form. If not, you will get it sometime in the next couple of days. So you remember that and be a part of uh, being uh, nominating deacons as God lays someone on your heart. Uh, you ask them if they'd be willing to serve if you nominated them, and then you turn that in, okay? Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin our service today. Thank you, choir, for a wonderful beginning uh, to our service today. And what a powerful message and song. Let's go to the Lord together. Father, what a joy to be in your house of worship. Even more than that, what a joy to know you personally through the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we come into your place of worship today, Lord, we pray that you will be the center of of all that we say, all that we do, all that we sing, may our hearts be in tune with worshiping you and gratefully being reminded of what you have offered us through the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask that you would lead in all that we do, that you'd speak to our hearts, that you'd help us to mature and grow in the study of your word. Bless our time of worship, Lord, as we lift our voices to praise you, Lord. It's, it's not just us singing songs. It is worship. It is about praising you and coming before you, lifting our voices to honor and to exalt you. Lord, we pray that you would inhabit the praise of your people. Work in this place. We look forward to what you do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. In the Psalms... David says, restore to me 
the joy of my salvation. I, I don't want you to raise your hand, but just think back. Think back to that moment. It could have been recently. It could have been years ago. The joy of knowing that God had entered in. in forgiveness and all of the guilt was erased the chains of the past broken at last I got saved oh I got saved I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? Oh, I've received nothing but goodness. I've tested and tasted his grace. I was so lost till I fell at the cross and got saved oh I got saved I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'm restored and made right he got a hold of my life I've got Jesus how could I want The love of God calls me up higher. His will is stronger. That's why I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold my how could I want more? I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of our Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. How could I want more? I got Jesus. How could I want more? Could I want more? If you got Jesus today, let me hear you shout amen. Amen. How could we want more? We're going to give out backpacks today. They're packed with folders, loose leaf paper, markers, pencils, erasers. Everything that's going to be used. But about 5.45, my pastor's going to grab the microphone. We're going to shut down the blow-ups. We're going to close the door on the coat cart. We're going to quit handing out hot dogs and snow cones. They're going to share the gospel. simple gospel message for any child, any parent that came with them, anyone within the sound of his voice will have an opportunity to sing I got saved to be undone by the mercy of his love we need you we need you to be standing and sitting and 
watching and paying attention and following up with those folks. We're going to have cards. You can grab. You can go. Talk to them. Get some information. Get their email address. We're giving away backpacks. My prayer has been every day this week, Lord, let us run out of backpacks. And for that next person to come up and say, we don't have any backpacks, but let me tell you about Jesus. We've got something so much greater we're going to give out today. <laughs> I want you to begin now praying for Brother Rick as he shares the gospel. Because that is what today is all about. Christ came so that you and I could be free. Not because we can do anything to deserve it or earn it. That is how much he loves us. Lift your voice and praise to him this morning, the Lamb of God. You came from heaven's throne, acquainted with our sorrow, to trade the debt we owe. Your son.
Oh, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Children's Church. Children's Church. Miss Jessica, Miss Stephanie, Miss Ella's got the lead over there. Here comes Miss Ari. Oh, James, I'm sorry. I missed you. And Shelby's right there behind you. All right. I missed you. And Miss Brandy's going today, too. All right. That's all right. Thank you, James. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you, James. Amen. Amen. The Lamb of God took our place. Amen? Amen. Whoo, I'm excited. I tell you what, that choir, I, it just got me fired up this morning. They look good. They sound good. I might have been stretching it when I said look good. I, I'm, I'm just kidding. That front row, you know, you always have to pray about it, right? Amen. Great, great is the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior. Yes. No matter how far away we're trying to run, we're still right there in his hands, and great is his faithfulness. Sing it with me this morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Beginning to end, my life in your hands. Great, great is your faithfulness. You never let go. This one thing I know. Great, great is your faithfulness. Do you believe that this morning? Stand with me as we pray. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside beginning to end my life in your hands great great is your faithfulness you never let go this one thing I know great
Our deacons will come forward. We'll receive our morning offering this morning. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, the Apostle Paul writing, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so must you do. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper. Storing up as he may prosper and give to the Lord. What a wonderful opportunity is ours to be a part of God's work, a part of his ministry, the ministry of the Dalbretta Baptist Church. I want to thank you for your faithfulness. With a good offering today, we will, for the first time in a long, long time, be above budget for the month. Very, very blessed. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for loving us. And Father, thank you for giving us life. And we have life in you, Father. And Father, we come to this time in our service where we worship you through our giving. And Father, just pray that you uh, use these uh, tithes and offerings to further us your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we continue with our study of the book of Galatians today, I invite you to turn to Galatians 1, and we'll be reading together in just a moment, Galatians 10, uh, 1, verses 10 through 12. Galatians 1, verses 10 through 12. As you follow on the printed page, I read it aloud. For I do now persuade men, or do I now persuade men? Or God? Do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant <clears throat> of Christ. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Today we continue to look at the true gospel. There are many false gospels in this world that you can tune into the radio or television or other means and you can hear them. There are many false gospels and as a gospel is false, if it says that you must do anything other than to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved, it is Jesus plus nothing. If it is Jesus plus baptism, it's the false gospel. If it's Jesus plus the Lord's Supper, church membership, good works, Jesus plus anything is a false gospel. Salvation is of Christ and Christ alone. That's the reason we preach Jesus. He is the gospel. Now, Paul had already talked about those who proclaimed a false gospel. He's, he was very straightforward about that. We looked at that last Sunday and what they were teaching and why it's false. And he said that they are troublemakers. He even called them perverts, which is a very strong word, for they perverted the gospel and are under the curse of God, he said. He could have not said it any more, uh, any more emphatically than he said it. It is a false gospel and they were perverts of the gospel and troublemakers in the church. As we look at the truth of the gospel today, we're reminded that the gospel is one thing. It is that Jesus died, that Jesus was buried, and that Jesus rose again. 
The gospel is about a man, and that man is Jesus Christ. The gospel is about him. The gospel is about not, uh, not about other subjects and not about other people in the scriptures. The gospel is about Jesus. The word gospel means good news. It means good tidings. The gospel is the good news concerning Jesus Christ and what he has done and what he offers through his death, burial, and resurrection. There's never been anybody like Jesus. There'll never be anybody else like Jesus. He is the only one. You can call the role of all the religious leaders of all history and put them alongside of them, him and they fall into insignificance for their message is empty. It has no hope. There's no one like Jesus. Say that with me. There is no one like Jesus. Can your life affirm that? Can your heart affirm that today, what you said with your mouth, that in your life, in your heart, there is no one like Jesus? He is your everything. There's no one like Jesus. He is the only begotten Son of God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me or except by me. Jesus Christ is the sum total. He is the essence of the gospel itself. You just look at Jesus. But secondly, not only is the gospel a man, and that man is Jesus Christ, but the secondly, not only is that true, the gospel is a message, and the message is found in 1 Corinthians 15. We've shared that already, you'll remember. We talked about it last Sunday. He says, I declare unto you the gospel, Jesus died for our sins, Jesus was buried, and Jesus was raised from the dead. That is the gospel. That is the message of, of the gospel. There are, there are a lot of other things in the Bible. We understand that. That's the reason we have Sunday school. That's the reason we have Bible studies. That's the reason you're encouraged to do your daily Bible reading and, and to study the Word. The Bible talks about the creation of man. It talks about that uh, selection of Abraham to be the father of a race, of a, of a great nation, God's chosen people. It tells that God sent a flood during the days of Noah and destroyed the whole world because man had turned against him and, and gone a different way. And that was his response. The Bible tells us that the prophets of God warned the people of God time and time again of being out of the will of God and to return to him and he would bless them. These things are part of the whole counsel of God, but they are not the gospel. The gospel is Jesus died, Jesus was buried, and Jesus rode again, rose again. The Bible tells us that Jesus himself was born of a virgin, that he lived a life without sin. That is a part of the whole counsel of God. It's a part of the Word of God, but it is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that one day Jesus Christ is going to, that he's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. The dead in Christ will rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. This is a wonderful truth for the Christian, but it is not the gospel. It's a part of the toll counsel of God. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised after the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, that's the gospel. Now, I'll remind you that Jesus was indeed born of a virgin. He indeed lived a life without sin. That's the message 
of the Scripture, the counsel of God. We know that he ascended into heaven, and one day he's going to come back again. This is the same Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. The message of the gospel, Christ died for our sins. He was buried, and he arose again the third day. But not only is the gospel a man, it's Jesus. The gospel is a message that is to proclaim, be proclaimed to a lost and dying mankind. But thirdly, the gospel is the means of salvation. There is no other way to be saved except through the man and the message of the gospel. Paul said in Romans, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Beloved, the means of salvation is the gospel. Folks are not going to get saved just by listening to a biblical narrative on David and Goliath. People are not going to get saved by just listening to Bible, uh, Bible narrations like Joseph and the coat of many colors. People are not even going to be saved just by knowing that Jesus is the Son of God born of a virgin. As important as those truths are, to the, it is not the gospel message. They must know that Jesus died for their sins, that he was buried, and he was raised from the dead. That's the gospel. Now let's go back to Galatians chapter 1. Paul said, I want to tell you, the gospel that I preach, I did not invent it in my heart I did not learn it from some man. It was revealed to me directly from the person of Jesus Christ himself. Two things I want to say to you about the gospel this morning. Two things about the gospel that the first 12 verses of the first chapter of Galatians teach. Number one, the gospel is a revealed gospel. It's not something man created. It's not something that a man thought of. It's not something that a man wrote a book about and it became a philosophy and, and then others took it as the gospel. It's not something that man even discovered it's not some truth of God that man just accidentally stumbled across. The gospel is a revealed message. Jesus came, born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, went to the cross of Calvary. He died on the cross. He was buried and he rose again. It is a gospel that has been revealed through the life, through the teachings, through the ministry, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It is revealed to us through the Apostle Paul's writings. It is revealed to us as we study the Old Testament and we see types of Christ as they're presented, portraits of Christ, God revealing his plan of redemption all through the books of the Old Testament. And then you come to the New Testament and the Word appears on the scene, the Word of God before the foundation of the world. All things were made by him and the Word came and became flesh and dwelt among us. And we find the fulfillment of all those things that led up to that evidence and that happening and that event of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins, he was buried, and he arose after three days, and he lives today. 
The gospel is revealed from Genesis 1 through Revelation. It is revealed over and over again. And it's revealed in the heart and the life of the Christian. We need to live our life in such a way that the gospel is revealed by how we treat others, how the, the way that we respond, the way that we live. Others ought to see Jesus in us. They ought to have the gospel revealed to them through the way that we walk, the way that we act, the way that we treat them, the way that we love them, the way that we respond to them. There ought to be something markedly different about a Christian as they live their life, that they are ones that have indeed come, become acquainted with the one who died for our sins, who was buried, and who rose again after three days in the earth. I'm so thankful that the gospel has been revealed. I'm so thankful as a man that God revealed his gospel to me when the Holy Spirit convicted my heart that the truth of Jesus and what he had done by his dying on the cross through his burial and his resurrection that he offered to me a victory over the death that I had had experienced a a spiritual death separated from God, bound for hell. And that gospel was revealed to me through the work of the Holy Spirit, through the preaching of my pastor, through the teaching of my Sunday school teacher, through a mother and dad who walked with God and believed the gospel and presented it to their children over and over again. It was a revealed gospel, but it's revealed through the Word of God what Jesus has done for us. But not only is it a revealed gospel, the gospel must be a received gospel. Look back up at verse 9. Paul says, As we said before, so now I say again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be a curse than that you have received. It is a received gospel. Do you remember the day that you received the gospel? Do you remember the day when you heard the gospel presented and you understood that you were a sinner and that Jesus died for your sins on the cross? that he suffered greatly, that, that uh, you might be forgiven, that he took your sins upon himself. Matter of fact, the Bible said he became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Do you remember the day that that was revealed to you and you said yes? When someone said, wouldn't you like to know Jesus? Wouldn't you like to have him come into your life? Wouldn't you like to know that you're forgiven? Wouldn't you like to know that you have a relationship with the Father? Wouldn't you like to know that heaven will be your eternal home? Wouldn't you like to know that it is all settled, that you're going to live forever, that you are forgiven, that you are saved, and you received the gospel for what Jesus had done for you? Do you remember that? Certainly you do. When you said to Jesus, come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. I'm trusting in him and nothing else. But there's something you were, you hear today who have never done that. There's some of you that have never done that. And right now, in just a moment, you're going to have to make a choice. The gospel has been told to you probably at least eight times in this message that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again. You've heard the gospel. You see, it is a revealed gospel. It ought to be revealed every time the man of God stands in the pulpit and preaches on whatever subject and whatever passage the Lord has led him to preach on, during that message there ought to be a revelation of the gospel, a sharing of the gospel, an opportunity for folks to hear the gospel and to be able to respond to the gospel. But you know, to hear the gospel, to understand the gospel, to have heard it eight times in a service, 
and to know how, that you could say it back to me, what the gospel is, and to know all of those things, and never having received the Lord of the gospel, the man of the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ, either today you will receive him or you will leave him rejected out of your life. Now, some of you would say, no, no, now wait just a minute. I don't plan on receiving him today, but I'm certainly not going to reject him. Jesus himself said, you're either for me or against me. There's no neutral ground. There's no neutral ground. You're not, you're not saving yourself from anything. You're not, you're not avoiding anything in your future by just hearing it. You must receive him. There is no neutral ground. Today, if you're not a Christian, either you receive him or you reject him. If you're not saved today, you either receive him as Lord and Savior and believe the gospel, or you say, no, I'm not going to receive him. For there is no neutral position. You can't have it both ways. You either receive him or you reject him. What are you going to do with the gospel today? Are you going to receive the truth of what Jesus has done for you? Are you going to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior? When he says, if you'll just ask me, I'll come in and I will fellowship with you and you with me. As many as who receive him, he gives the power to become a child of God. It, that takes place when you respond to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he is the man of the gospel. He is the message of the gospel. And as we proclaim the gospel afresh today, what will you do with Jesus? The old hymn says, what will you do with Jesus? Neutral, you cannot be. For someday, your heart will be asking, what will he do with me? I'll tell you the answer to that. Those who have never received him through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, those who've never responded to him, to him in repenting of their sins and asking him to be the Lord of their life, those who have neglected the opportunity, he will say, sorry, I never knew you. You see, the gospel is not just some sweet story. It's just not some hip, uh, a message of giving someone some hope in life and, and encouragement. The gospel is the opportunity for every individual that is they're given to come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, to be forgiven, to become a part of God's family to be delivered from your sins and to be given everlasting life. What will you do with the revealed truth? Receive it or reject it? Jesus said, you're either with me or you're against me. Those are hard words. But they come from the lips of the man who loves you more than anyone could ever love you in all of eternity. Jesus gave himself for you that you may know him, that you may have everlasting life, that you may be in heaven for eternity. He did that for you, and he invites you to come to him and receive the gospel message that he died on the cross for your sins, that he was buried, and after three days, 
He arose. He lives. He's alive. And his Holy Spirit invites you to come to him this very morning. Will you? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? With heads bowed and eyes closed, the gospel has been revealed. The gospel was given through the man, Christ Jesus. The gospel is revealed in his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. And the Holy Spirit is in this place speaking to hearts, telling you that what the preacher has said is the truth of the Word of God. You can know forgiveness. You can know Jesus this morning, right where you are. Without speaking out loud, why don't you pray this prayer? Father, I believe the gospel. I believe Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins, who was buried, he arose, and he lives today. And right now, by faith, I ask you to forgive me, to come into my life, and to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for the promise of your word that whoever would believe on Jesus would be saved. Right now, Lord, I believe. Thank you for your promise. If you prayed that prayer, you would not be ashamed of Jesus from this moment forward. He says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. And the opportunity comes now in what we call an invitational time. The pastor will be standing down front. I'll be glad to receive you to talk with you for a minute, pray with you, as you make your commitment, as you make your decision open and public, proclaiming Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Let me encourage you to do that right now. Lord Jesus, have your way in this invitation time. Lord, you have given us the gospel You are the person of the gospel. And today, Lord, your Holy Holy Spirit invites men and women and boys and girls to come into a life-changing relationship of the man of the gospel. Have your way in this time. In Jesus' name, amen.